Shalom Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live here from Jerusalem. And as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, it's not just a picture in this case here. RT News uh, sharing a photograph that was taken there of Pope Francis and the EU leaders there in Rome inside the Sistine Chapel. And it's not just the fact that the picture itself is worth a thousand words. It's the very, very fact of what Pope Francis had to say in the meeting there on the 60th anniversary, or actually the day before the 60th anniversary of the European Union, where Rome was the creator of the European Union itself. Uh, but in his words here that he said to the EU heads of state that were attending this meeting there, he spoke about how the 28 nation bloc that was gathered together there was in fear of dying, and mainly because his own views uh, that he expresses of what the European Union should look like is like some are not really for that. But anyway, as I was looking at this, one of the things he said, when a body loses its sense of direction and it's no longer able to look ahead, it experiences a regression and in the long run risk of dying, Pope Francis said in Friday's address, which was yesterday. Um, but what we found very interesting is that when you begin to look at what the Pope is saying here, and of course another, another article here, they had, they had entitled it here, uh, and this is on the, the Express, uh, the home of the Daily Sunday Express here, Divine Intervention, EU leaders will turn to the Pope over plans to revive the struggling bloc. European leaders are to hold an historic meeting with the Pope later this month when they head to Rome to unveil their make or break plans to revive the struggling European Union. Well, after yesterday's meeting and today's meetings that they're having with the Pope of Rome right now, uh, you cannot help but wonder people like uh, Maria Le Pen, who is definitely running against everything that Pope Francis says, including uh, expelling the refugees, something that Pope Francis has said in his own speech there uh, with the European Union leaders there, that they need to reconsider the way they're treating the refugees that are coming in. So Maria Le Pen, definitely being a far right, is not going to be one of the politicians that he would like to send to see win France's election as the new French president. But you can't really expect anything different from that, especially in light of uh, something here I'd like to share with you. And this was uh, posted by Steve Rosenberg, uh, a, a BBC commentator here, where Maria Le Pen actually flew to Moscow at the Kremlin there and met with Vladimir Putin only just, just weeks away from the election that's coming up in May for the presidency. I guess if... Uh, Donald Trump had done something like that, he would have never made president, would he? They would have hung him completely, already trying to have him thrown out of office for any possible ties his administration may have had with, the, with uh, Vladimir Putin. But it doesn't look like Maria Le Pen was worried about any of that, not even in the slightest. I want to just play a little clip of this here for you to look at here. Take a listen to this. So the fact that President Putin met Marine Le Pen in the Kremlin yesterday is a huge message of support to her from him. And Marine Le Pen gets a very positive press in Russia today. This has come from Moscow Pravda, which says that uh, the French presidential candidate wasn't frightened of earning herself the label back home Putin's person. It goes on to say that while Donald Trump in Washington is doing all he can and to repudiate the slightest suggestion of links to Russia. In France, they have a different approach to this question. One of the main candidates in France's election, Marine Le Pen, just one month before the elections in that country, not only flew to Moscow, but came to the Kremlin to meet Vladimir Putin. And if you read Moskovsky comes to Wallets today, you can see why she might want to do that. The paper says that Marine Le Pen has long been famous for her love for Russia. Uh, she has openly expressed respect for Vladimir Putin. She uh, recognized Crimea as Russian territory. Straight. You know, it's kind of interesting. It's breaking up a little bit on the on the uh, because the internet's a little bit slow here compared to what we have at our office there. But as he's stating here, that 
he was, she was, excuse me, the, the, uh, Mr. Rosenberg was stating that Maria Le Pen actually favored Crimea as long held a part of Russian territory. She was not against that whatsoever and has a strong uh, support for the Russian, uh, Russian people, especially that of President Vladimir Putin. Now that kind of echoes a little bit about what President Donald Trump was saying before elected as president. He also had spoke about how that Crimea was part of Russia and didn't see any problem with it. It wasn't until he got into office and faced all the opposition from his own uh, team there that he actually backtracked and later had uh, Haley speak at the United Nations as the uh, ambassador saying that uh, until uh, Crimea is handed back to Ukraine, there will be no lifting of sanctions. A complete, a complete about face from what he originally stated on the campaign trail. So anyway, the EU is definitely looking to make some new strides here with new leadership and that leadership being from the Pope of Rome. But it's not going to just go away easily as the Sputnik is reporting here. The EU is planning to drive a wedge between Russia and Serbia. That's because there's a growing relationship between Serbia and Russia right now, and that's becoming another troubling point for the European Union. It's really becoming a religious war and really becoming more and more obvious, not that it wasn't a religious war from the very beginning. Ukraine itself was a religious war. It was the Roman Catholic Church against the Russian, Russian Orthodox Church. And that was something that, of course, had a lot to do with what happened during the Soviet Union periods. It was clearly... Rome trying to uh, completely take over uh, the Russian Orthodox Church using communism. Well, looks like they're back on the rise once again in what they're trying to do. But Serbia, according to veterans today, is not just going out, laying there, taking it easy either. So Serbia has new missiles that will keep NATO at bay. Well, how long will that last? It's probably a lot, uh, Serbia will probably be the next Ukraine if that's, the, if that's their intentions and the way they're headed right now. Sputnik also is waging a war uh, um, as far as the media campaign, trying to show, too, that the United States is not that much favorable towards the Ukrainians, or Ukrainian government as well. In fact, calling them the expendables. Kiev dismayed after realizing the West sees it as waste material. Don't know if that's really the case or not, but they're trying to paint a picture there, I guess, to get the public to accept it and believe it there so that they can uh, turn that situation around as well. Anyway, one last bit of news for you guys here. Hamas senior member was killed in the Gaza Strip yesterday, and Hamas is already vowing to uh, revenge the, the death of this uh, senior Hamas member. As a Sunni Islamic organization was killed in the Gaza Strip on Friday, Reuters news agency reported citing a statement of the group's police. Unidentified men several times shot a militant named Mazin Fuka near his home, according to the news agency. Fakal was uh, discharged from the imprisonment by the Israelis in 2011 and deported to the Gaza Strip. According to the Izzat al-Rashik, another Hamas senior member, the killer used silencers when they shot, uh, shot in the head of the 30-year-old Hamas fighter. A spokesman for the Interior Ministry for the Gaza Strip noted the Fakal was killed in Tel Hama neighborhood and that the investigation of the incident had been launched. But again, as I said, Hamas already vowing revenge for this killing and blaming the Israelis for his assassination. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live again here in Jerusalem as we prepare for the conference that will be happening on March 28th, Tuesday this week. Uh, we hope to see you guys here as well. I no doubt will definitely be a blessing. Also, uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick will be speaking at this conference. We hadn't spoke about that before, but it is on the website, wwwpasic 17 Dot com. And if you live here in Israel and would like to attend this, please just go there. You can register for the meeting there. It's a free admission. There's no charge for it, but you're more than welcome to come. Uh, it's at the Harp of David is the uh, venue that we'll be holding this at on Mount Zion, just outside of Mount uh, Zion Gate there and right around the corner from David's tomb in the upper room. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.